Hello and thank you for stopping by for this week's video. Today we are going to look at paper dungeon tiles and are they good for you? So right off the bat, I'm going to say up front that I am not a fan of paper tiles. I prefer to make my own, but by the end of this video, I may have changed my mind. So hang in there till the end and find out. So here we have some paper dungeon tiles that I printed out. They are printed not on standard printer paper. I went for like the next level up, which is like just a thicker paper, but not a cardstock. And these tiles are from Skeleton Key Games, and I just happened to have a bunch of them. I found them in a folder. So I figured, hey, let's see if they're any good or not. So I printed out a, a variety of them, uh, more than what you see here. But um, what you're looking at is a, basically a small dungeon, like the corner of a larger room, and then a waterway, kind of like a sewer waterway. And I also printed out, like I said, a bunch of others, which I'll show you as we go along. So let's go through a couple of the pros of using paper tiles. For one, they're very easy to make. Um, this is a printer, some cardboard, and some glue, and you're pretty much good to go. Um, secondly, meh, they're easy to carry, maybe. Um, they're going to be thinner, for sure. Uh, easy to store, yeah, I guess, I guess you could say they're easy to carry. Uh, thirdly, they're going to be easier to replace. If someone spills something on one of these or it gets damaged, you just need to print out another one and go ahead and glue it to some cardboard. Whereas your crafted tiles, you're, you're going to have to go and go through a little effort to cut the foam, glue it, repaint it, or try to repair the one that's damaged. So yeah, a little bit easier to replace if necessary. So what are the cons of the paper tiles? For me, there's two big ones. Number one is they just don't look as good as three-dimensional tiles. I know there's some three-dimensional elements printed on them, but it doesn't look three-dimensional. It looks two-dimensional. To me, the paper tiles look like you're playing a board game and not a role-playing game. So that's a big con for me. I just don't like the way they look. The second one is going to be the cost. These are going to cost a lot more than dungeon tiles. Now, I'm just talking about, I'm not talking about your time. I'm talking, talking about just the dollars that you're going to spend on these. Um, I definitely spent quite a bit in ink to print out the variety of tiles I did. If you looked at my video that I put out previously, I have a video showing you how to make a full set of dungeon tiles for $1. Um, I'll leave that link in the um, description below if you want to check it out. But I definitely spent more than a dollar's worth of ink to make these. Now granted, it takes more time to make the dungeon tiles, but how much more time, if you've done it before, not really that much more. It's pretty quick and you can mass produce them pretty easily. So for me, those are the two big cons. Um, if you have any more pros or cons that you can think of, go ahead and leave them in the comments below for me. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Making these tiles is going to be pretty straightforward, but we'll go through it real quick. So I printed them out, like I said, on a paper that was a little bit thicker than uh, just regular printer paper because it's going to ripple if you print it in color, the thin printer paper that you normally have. So I went a little bit thicker. I took an X-Acto knife, I put a brand new blade in it, and then I just started cutting out the tiles on the dotted lines. Okay, so with them cut out here, you can see I have basically the corner of a larger dungeon room. I'm going to do some individual tiles, and then I wanted to glue like four together and make like one bigger room and see how it would come out, you know, how it would look. So I just took a piece of cardboard that I had from a box. I cut the side off a box. And now I'm just going to lay out the tiles and see if they fit on the cardboard, which they wind up, uh, they do fit. So for the next step, I'm just going to use some glue. I'm not going to use normal PVA glue for this. I'm going to give this a fair shake because I know if I use PVA glue on this kind of surface area, it's going to warp and then I'm going to have to start dealing with the warping. So I just took a real cheap spray adhesive and I went ahead and sprayed the back of the tiles with that and then just lined them up on the cardboard. Now the spray adhesive I used is called, this is a very general purpose spray adhesive. And one of the things I like about it is how inexpensive it is. However, if you read the review, reviews on it, a lot of people complain that it doesn't stick very well. And I think that's because they're just not reading the directions on the can. And uh, if you do, it says you have to spray the adhesive onto the item, wait for it to get tacky, then apply your second item. 
And I, I followed those directions and I had no problem whatsoever. Everything stuck very securely. Okay, the other nice thing about the spray adhesive is it dries so quickly. Um, PVA glue, you're gonna have to wait for a while. So just after a half an hour, I go back and everything is nice and tight and secure to the cardboard. I go ahead and just trim the edges off and try to make it look as neat as possible. And there you have a nice large 12 by 12 tile of a dungeon floor. I could have done a little bit better job lining it up because the I can see that some of the lines are off and whatnot, but I don't think it's that noticeable and I think it's more than playable that way. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and move over to the waterway tile. Now for that one, I'm going to do a little different. I'm going to use chipboard for that um, just to see if there's a difference at all. And there winds up not really being any difference. The chipboard I happen to have, uh, the cardboard obviously is going to be a lot less expensive. So let's go ahead and get that prepared. Now I have to admit that while doing these waterway section, I kind of like it. Um, I was kind of meh about the dungeon tiles. I, they didn't really throw me the, the four, you know, the four panel one that I did just previous. But this one looked pretty good. Um, and I was thinking, you know, you could throw some other tiles on either side of it and easily have like a sewer, you know, a sewer walkway or some kind of flooded dungeon area. It may just be because I like the look of these tiles better and I, I don't like the look of the dungeon ones as much. So that's just a personal preference. But uh, I can say I really like the flooded um, dungeon sections that I have here. One of the things I did with the paper tiles also is if I print out a six by six, you know, square of a dungeon tile, it doesn't have to be left that way. So I went ahead and did like a one by four or a one by five and did some passageways. You can do some alcoves and just try to mix it up a little bit and make them as versatile as I could. Here I'll showcase some of the various tiles that I made. The uh, dungeon geomorphs you see there, I already had those from quite a while ago. Just kept them in this uh, blue box that I had. And so I just went ahead and put the other tiles in there as well. But you can see I made quite a variety of them, different kinds and uh, with, you know, different sizes. Here I have my wet erase mat out and I have some of the tiles in the center, kind of like an ultimate dungeon terrain style. So I think they would be useful for that. You could easily switch, say, if uh, your party's outdoors adventuring and they find an entrance to a dungeon, and then you can just easily just take those four tiles and plop down four different ones and say they're in a dungeon now or a cavern system or something like that. So I definitely think there's a use for them. Am I now going to switch over to paper dungeon tiles? No, definitely not. Um, but this is a tool in your toolbox. And this is something that may be of use at some point for some reason that you may come up with. I'm not going to throw these tiles away. I like them. I'm going to put them back in my box and I'm going to save them. And like I said, it's, it's another tool in my toolbox. And at some point in the future, I may need to run maybe a one shot game or a quick game. And I can just grab my box of tiles and just head out the door with my, uh, my wet erase mat and I'm good to go. Alrighty guys, that's going to do it. Let me know what you think about paper tiles. Do you use them? Would you never use them? What are your thoughts on it? Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate you being here. Don't forget if you like the video to subscribe to see more content. Hit the bell if you'd like to be notified and definitely leave a comment because I'd love to hear from you.